This is the short, short, or as short as it can be, version of how to record multi-channel audio from your montage into your DAW on a Mac. Before we get started, you must have your montage connected to your Mac via a USB cable coming from the USB to host port on the back of the montage into a USB port that is connected to your Mac, either directly or with a hub. With that connected, you must install the Yamaha Steinberg USB driver. If you've only just installed that, you'll need to reboot your computer before it fully activates. With all of that in place, let's open up Utilities Audio MIDI Setup, and we'll see under Audio Devices that we have a montage device showing six output channels and 32 input channels. If you don't have that, something's gone wrong. If you do, let's proceed. Over on the montage, I've got a performance called Magnetism loaded up. Uh, this is a preset performance and it comes from the musical effects section. And the reason I'm using that is because it has eight separate parts that we can monitor with eight separate stereo tracks. Just to make sure that we're on a level playing field to start off with, I'm going to use Shift Utility for a quick setup and use Quick Setup 1, which is going to output stereo audio directly from the montage without any additional routing. Let's get our first DAW sorted out. Here is Logic. This is the Choose a Project Wizard, and I want an empty project. The input and output device is going to be the montage itself. That, we, that, that means I want you to have your headphones or your monitors connected directly to your montage rather than to a separate audio interface. If you want to use a separate audio interface, you can. I've got a separate video that talks about how to do that with an aggregate device, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to use the montage itself. The sample rate is 44.1 because that's what the montage uses. You can use any other set, uh, setting if you want to, but that's what I'm using now. We'll hit choose and up comes the logic screen asking us what kind of track we want. We want to create eight audio tracks, one for each part. But we can start off with one, choose audio, and then under the audio input option, I want to pick the first stereo pair. You can see that there are the 32 mono channels there. Uh, you can see I've labeled all of these, yours may not be. But I want input one plus two. And then I want to click ascending because when I create the subsequent tracks, I want them to go this one, this one, this one. So one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, etc. So we're going to leave it on there. And then all of these tracks are going to be output to output one and two without ascending and input monitoring and record enable enabled. Eight tracks and create. Here they are labeled one to eight. And with them all selected, I'm just going to right click on them and say create a summing stack. The reason for that is I can record arm all of them in one go with that single click on the uh, folder header. Right, let's hit audition and see what we get. So as expected, we're getting stereo audio coming into audio track one. It's working fine and we can hear it, but that's not actually what we want, is it? We want multi-channel audio. So back to the montage, shift utility for quick setup and audio record on DAW. Now you may notice that direct monitoring has been turned off if we go and look into audio IO and that's going to have an effect, um, but we'll show you what that is now. I'll hit audition and as you can see from the individual tracks and from the mixer we do now have eight separate stereo tracks being played and Logic is receiving all of that audio but we can't hear it and the reason for that is that direct monitoring has been turned off on the montage and the DAW is currently not telling the montage to output anything. So we can fix that by turning that off and going to Logic Pro settings audio and turning on software monitoring. Now we'll be able to hear it as it plays back. If I turn it off it disappears straight away but you can see it's still recording. So depending on your setup you may want software monitoring on or off just depending on uh, how you are monitoring the montage yourself. So let's get that ready and hit record. And here comes our stereo audio tracks. Okay. Pick up any one of those once we've stopped recording and inspect it and there we go. So we have now eight separate stereo tracks that we can play back at any point. Right, that is logic done. Let's move on to 
Cubase. I'm using Cubase AI, so I've got these handy uh, montage multi-channel recording templates. So I'm going to pick that one and hit create and then give it a default folder location. And once the interface comes up, let's take a look at what we've got. We have uh, some VSTs and some MIDI, and then we've got a folder full of the audio tracks. So just once again, to get the level playing field, we will shift utility to get standalone mode, and then we'll audition. And we can see that the montage is putting out stereo audio on the first stereo pair, but not multi-channel. So let's stop that and run shift utility, audio record on DAW. No, that's quick setup three. And when we audition, here is the multi-channel audio. We can see in the mixer that it's being received, but you can see in the track headers that nothing is being monitored or recorded. The reason for that is that the direct monitoring on the montage has been turned off. We need to do some sort of software monitoring in the DAW instead. With Cubase, that corresponds to this little gadget here, the speaker icon, so I can turn on monitoring for all of those tracks by using the um, header for the folder. There we are, we're monitoring them all now. Let's also record arm them, set the playhead, and start recording. Okay, there we go, let's uh, stop that all, turn off recording and monitoring, and we should be able to play back what we recorded. Now, if you don't have Cubase AI or you don't have those montage templates for whatever reason, don't worry, uh, it's not a problem. You can do this manually. You're just going to need to create a folder if you want to be able to control everything like I am here uh, with eight or 16 or however many audio tracks you need. And then you're going to look at each individual track. And the first one, which is going to correspond to the first part on the montage performance, is going to be directing its output to the main output of the montage. And the input is going to be USB main, not USB 1 and 2. That would be far too simple. USB main. And then part 2, audio track 2, is going to be USB 1 and 2. And the third one is 3 and 4. The fourth one is 5 and 6, going right down to track 8, which is going to be using USB 13 and 14. So that's how you'd set it up manually. Um, not a uh, major headache, but uh, just so you know. So finally, here is Ableton Live. This is just live light, so I have a limit to the number of inputs I've got. So I'm only going to be able to demo four channels, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to just check that I've got the montage as my audio input and output device here. Then I'm going to get rid of those MIDI channels because I don't need them. And in the first audio track, I'm going to set the input to be 1 slash 2. That's uh, inputs 1 and 2, the first stereo pair. And on the second, I'm going to use the second stereo pair, 3 and 4. Then I'm just going to keep on duplicating those until I get to the maximum that I can use in this version and set those accordingly. So that's now going to be inputs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, 8. Let's hit audition after we have quickly set ourselves back to standalone mode. And we can see that live is receiving audio from this, but uh, it's only stereo, and that's not what we want. So we'll go to quick setup three and audition again. And now you can see that live is receiving multi channel audio on all of these channels. But we can't hear it because direct monitoring is turned off, so we need to do software monitoring, in which case we're going to switch all of these tracks to auto monitoring but we still can't hear what the montage is playing. And the reason for that is that live needs to have the tracks record enabled to hear anything coming from them. So record enable is down here, but before I start switching this over, let's just check that we can do that. You can see that I can select multiple tracks, but by default, live won't let you do that. That's a setting that you find by right clicking on the record button and turning off arm exclusive. By default, that's turned on. Let me show you what happens if I try to record on a second track here. You can see it's just switching the record arms track rather than letting me build multiple tracks. So we'll turn off arm exclusive, arm all those tracks. Now we can see and hear the input. Switch over to the timeline screen, hit record. And we should see the audio being recorded with four separate stereo tracks, all at the same 
time. And when I come back, we should be able to play this back. So I hope that this gives you a really good start on getting any of your problems with multi-channel recording sorted out. If you follow this tutorial and you still have problems, then drop a comment and uh, I'll see if I can get you sorted out. Until next time, see ya.